Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to 8-Ball Sports, and it is the post-game analysis for the Texas-Oklahoma game, the Red River rivalry, uh, and man, was it an exciting one. Uh, a great game, a great afternoon game. I always like it when uh, there's at least one like top 25 matchup that comes on at 11, because I don't just want to watch all these good teams play crappy teams at 11 o'clock. So we had Texas versus Oklahoma. And Texas comes out with a victory, 48-45, kicking a game-winning field goal with about 10 seconds left. And uh, Texas is back. Uh, the title of this video is going to be, you know, Texas is Texas the favorite in the Big 12? And in my opinion, uh, they are. I'll get more into detail on that uh, later in the, on in the video. But I have the stats here. Uh, Sam Ellinger, 24-35, 315 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. Uh, rushing the ball for Texas, Ingram 13 carries, 86 yards, Ellinger 19 carries, 72 yards, and three touchdowns. So five total touchdowns for Ellinger, and he did not turn the ball over at all today. And that's that's the big key to me was the turnovers. Um, the, the, the interception by Murray and then the fumble by Murray. The fumble by uh, Kyler Murray was the big turning point in the game for me. Uh, because it allowed Texas to get some of that momentum back, and then they ended up taking that, and I think went up two scores, and then went up three scores, and I really thought the game was over at that point. Uh, Oklahoma did a really good job of fighting back, tying it up in the fourth quarter. Some bad play calling by Texas, another thing I'll get on to later, but, um, you know, they made it interesting. Texas gets that last drive. They go down uh, the field and uh, kick the game winner. Uh, receiving Humphrey, nine catches, 134 yards, and a touchdown. And Johnson, six catches, 81 yards, as well as a touchdown. Dicker, the kicker, did kick the game winner. He was two for two on kicks, I do believe. And uh, that's about all I have written down for Texas. A really clean game by Texas. They ran the ball well. They passed the ball well. And it seemed like their offense was not going to be stopped until that fourth quarter came around. And I really think Tom Herman and the play calling got a little soft, a little too conservative. Um, they showed the fourth down comparisons uh, when, after Oklahoma tied it up, and they had ran, I think, 12 plays for 41 yards. And most of those were runs, and their pass plays were just weird pass plays. You know, where were these slant patterns? Where were the quick curls um, in, early, in the fourth quarter? You know, if you're going to throw the ball, throw what had been working the entire game. Instead, they tried to do some, some bootleg play action, some, you know, rollout throws. It, it just weird play calling to me. And it allowed Oklahoma a chance to come back, and, and Kyler Murray made some plays, including that big 67-yard run to, uh, to get Oklahoma right back in it. So for Oklahoma, Murray, 19 for 26, 314 yards, four touchdowns, one interception. He also was their leading rusher, 11 carries, 92 yards in a score, but 67 of those yards coming on that one run. So, you know, take away that, it's about 10 carries for under 30 yards, I think. So he really did not necessarily run the ball too effectively besides that big run. Uh, and then their running back, Sermon, had nine carries, 54 yards, and a touchdown. Receiving, uh, Brown had nine catches, 131 yards, and two touchdowns. And then C.D. Lamb had six catches, 75 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, for Oklahoma, again, you know, some unreal stats. Both quarterbacks had five total touchdowns responsible for, but... Um, that, you know, I think you look at the turnovers, two for Murray, zero for Ellinger. That's the big thing, in my book at least. The big reason why Texas won this game was because of the, the turnover differential. Oklahoma made mistakes. Texas played a clean game, and really Oklahoma's defense could not stop, uh, really couldn't get off the field. The announcers mentioned that Oklahoma's defense was probably tired, and I think that's that's pretty true. With how quick their offense works, they, you know, their average touchdown drive, is under three minutes. They're on the field a lot. And they were on the field a lot against Army a couple weeks ago. They were on the field a lot against Baylor. And they were on the field a lot today. Their defense is tired. And their defense already is not great. Um, you know, I just simply put, I think if they had a, a mi middle-of-the-road defense last year, they probably would have made the national championship game. I don't know if they would have won it, but, you know, you look at that game against Georgia – if their defense could have just played a little bit better, Baker Mayfield did everything they needed to do to win to win that game. But their defense just couldn't hold them. So, I mean, this this bad Oklahoma defense has been going back for, for years now, even before Lincoln Riley got here. Um, and, you know, Texas, 
I think you could argue probably has the best defense in the Big 12. Um, I mean, that's, in my opinion, they're the best defense in the Big 12. I mean, they gave up 45 points today, but I still believe they are the best defense in the Big 12. Um, so, other things I have written down here. The title of the video, I already kind of mentioned it. Is Texas the favorite to win the Big 12 now? Next week, they go and play Baylor. Then they go and play Oklahoma State. And then they play West Virginia. That West Virginia game is going to be the key matchup. But don't don't overlook Oklahoma State. Um, with how high-powered their offense is, I expect that one to be another high-scoring game. And if Ellinger you know, doesn't show up, uh, Oklahoma State could very well surprise Texas and take that game. The problem with the Big 12 and only having, you know, 10 teams and those 10 teams, you know, they're not split into divisions like the SEC West, SEC East, you know, the Big 12, I think they're like the legends and whatever the other thing is. Um, the problem with that is that they don't get to really slip up. You know, if you look at the Big 10 matchup, um, Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State's on one side, which I do believe the Big Ten obviously is heavily sided on one, uh, heavily, all the good teams are on one side at this moment, but Wisconsin, Nebraska are on the other side. Um, but, you know, you can you can afford to mess up because, say you're Wisconsin, you lose to a Big, big Ten team, but with the other side being so bad, you still have a chance. You know, Nebraska then goes and loses two, team, two against two teams like Northwestern, Purdue or something, boom, you're right back on top. With the Big 12, it's just the top two teams. And right now, West Virginia and Texas look like that's going to be, they're going to be it. Now, Oklahoma still has a, a chance to make it. They can still get redemption. Um, but they got to step up on defense. You know, they, they score plenty of points. They score fast. They score, uh, you know, they're in an electric offense. But their defense, uh, without a good defense, I don't see them winning the Big 12. I honestly don't even, I don't obviously not see them in the playoffs. Um, speaking of playoffs, with this loss, Oklahoma's playoff hopes uh, pretty, took a pretty big hit. You know, they're not out of it. They're not out of it yet, but this is a big loss. And they, they have to win out, and they have to hope they make the Big 12 championship game, and they have to hope they win that. And then I think you can definitely say the Big 12 champion could get in. Um, but if they don't make the Big 12 championship game, uh, say West Virginia beats Texas, then at Oklahoma and it'd be Texas West Virginia again in the Big 12 championship game. I don't see Oklahoma making it without the Big 12 championship. We've seen this before. Before they had the championship game with TCU back in 2014, TCU and Baylor, two of the top teams, but neither of them had a conference championship. Ohio State got put in ahead of them, went on to win the national championship. Um, so to me, if Oklahoma cannot win the Big 12 then they're not going to make it. So they need to be rooting for uh, really just kind of, I don't even know what to call it. They need to be rooting for a explosion in the Big 12, you know, upsets everywhere, and that's what you have to do. Texas is back, guys. You know, um, it's kind of been a joke here recently of, you know, we, they won that game against Notre Dame a couple years ago, and people said Texas is back. And then they went on to have like six wins that season. Last year, they lost to Maryland. Come out, play a good game against USC a couple weeks later. People say maybe Texas is back. They obviously weren't back. Um, I think we can officially say they're back. They have wins over TCU, USC, and Oklahoma. Now, the TCU, USC, those are TCU is probably going to be like an 8-4 and four team. USC is probably going to be like a 7-5, and, and five, maybe even a 6-6, six and six, possibly an 8-4 and four team as well. But Oklahoma, that's going to be, this is that win for me that pushes them to uh, to officially being back because this is a top 10 team that they beat. This is a high-powered offense that they kept up with, and they ended up winning. Uh, so that's going to be it for this post-game analysis. Uh, I keep these as unbiased as possible because I love college football. I'm not a fan of either of these teams, but I don't dislike either of these teams uh, either. So if you enjoyed this video, if you're a Texas, Oklahoma fan, please hit that thumbs up button. Um, if you you know, t Give me your opinion on the game in the comment section down below. What did you think of it? And is Texas the favorite to win the Big 12, or do you have West Virginia, or do you still somehow have Oklahoma, even with that Big 12 loss? Let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, subscribe to the channel for more post-game analysis. I'll talk to you guys later.